Welcome back. In this video, I want to welcome all of you back to school, our students, our families, our staff, our faculty, and explain to you our school reopening plan, which is entitled Smart, Healthy, and Holy, a Home and School Partnership. And here to help me explain to you what that will look like, what our rollout will be, what our phase one uh, will be, is Smart, Dr. Kelly Shoebridge, and Healthy, Nurse Shannon David. And they'll be each explaining to you the various parts of our school reopening plan. But what I want to in emphasize at the very beginning is this is a partnership, as it always is, between home and school. Here we are committed to keeping our environments healthy, and we ask you to do the same with your environments, particularly with whatever environments you place your children in. And as you do that together in our collaboration, we can make sure that our students remain safe uh, and healthy throughout uh, this school year. So there are a lot of details to our plan and uh, many questions I'm sure that you will have, which we'll be very happy to, to answer in the next few weeks. And Nurse David has been putting in the school newsletter uh, various aspects of the plan in great detail to help you understand the system that we have uh, developed using the guidelines that have been proposed by various groups, the Department of Health, the CDC, and uh, school districts throughout, throughout the country. And it's important to remember that as each family is unique, each school is unique as well. So we've taken the guidelines and looked at our own unique demographics, our population, and applied the guidelines in a way that will work best for our school. There are a lot of schools out there and there are a lot of different school reopening plans. And they're different for a whole variety of reasons, but mostly because each school is unique. The number of students, the ages of the students, the areas in which the students come from. So taking all that information, we've pulled it together to develop a school reopening plan that will suit our needs best and suit the needs of our, our students as well. And so as you listen to this video, uh, it's a bit lengthy because there are a lot of details that go into this, which include the educational piece. And the important piece there is to make sure we could get our students uh, up to grade level, if they're not, because of the, the shutdown that we had in, in, in the spring, uh, and to use all the tools that we have at our disposal to help our students learn as quickly as possible and to keep, keep learning. And then uh, with uh, Nurse David to explain to you the health implications of our school reopening plan, how it will work and what changes we'll have to make and how we'll go through the various phases. So uh, I really thank you for your willingness uh, to partnership with us to make sure that uh, our children, our students remain as healthy as possible and that again, we'll continue our educational pursuits all throughout this year. We'll also continue our holy pursuits the sacraments uh, will be uh, offered, uh, especially for the third grade last year, now uh, fourth grade communion and confirmation. Uh, we'll be doing that in the beginning of October, as well as preparing the next group uh, for their sacraments uh, in the spring semester. So we invite your participation, your questions, your feedback, so that we can uh, explain to you why we've made the decisions we've made and how our school reopening plan will look on August 17th. So these past few months, we have been working with the health experts, the counselors, the East Valley principals, and uh, the Catholic Schools Office to determine a plan that we feel will best suit our community. We put a lot of time, data, and prayer into our plan. So we're gonna move um, forward with opening in a three-phase system. So for the first phase, that's what I'm gonna discuss with you today. Uh, before I move into the academics, I want to start with a couple of the things in the background. So first of all, we're going to start with a kiss and go drop off. So what that means is in the mornings, we are going to drop our children off in the parking lot and they'll walk up into the school. If, and this includes the preschool children also. Um, what will happen is the, the preschool teachers will meet you at the gate, the students, and they will walk them over to the preschool. As for the um, kindergarten students, kindergarten parents may walk their kindergarten child to the kindergarten classroom. However, they will stand outside the classroom, they will wait until the bell rings and remain with their child, and then the child will go into the classroom. The parents will not enter in the classrooms and you will exit on the east side of the school building, so basically behind the school. For volunteers, 
We love our volunteers. We couldn't do all the wonderful things around here if we didn't have so many amazing volunteers. However, we do want to limit the adults that are on campus. So during our first phase, we will not have the volunteers here at the school. Each class, we are going to um, turn into a cohort family. So what's gonna happen is when the children come into school, they are gonna remain with the children in their classroom. And that includes the upper grades. So in fifth through eighth, usually they switch classes the students will not be switching classrooms. What will happen is instead, the teachers are going to move classrooms. We will not have buddy time for a little while. We love buddies, but that's not gonna be part of phase one. What we wanna do is to keep the children together in their classrooms. They will also have their specials in the classrooms. Now, what we've decided to do is for recess, you know, kids need to get out and run and play. So they will go to recess. However, we will be doing them in smaller groups. Um, kindergarten will go one class at a time on the kindergarten playground. Then first and second grade will go out to recess and we will have the field divided where the first graders will play in one portion and the second graders will play in another. Third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and then for seventh and eighth when they have their breaks, seventh will go on the B side of the building, eighth grade will go on the A side of the building. We're gonna do something very similar when it comes to lunch. These same groups are going to go to lunch and that way we will have less children in the cafeteria and there will only be three to four students sitting at each of the tables. We are still gonna have our lunch program. Um, Mrs. Dene, who runs the Orangey Happy, Happy Catering, she will still be doing lunch. However, she's going to box the lunches. There will be no salad bar. She will still offer that, but it will be inside the packaged lunches. In the classroom, we will have the students' desk set up in rows. They will be scattered in columns and rows to allow for more spacing. We've asked the teachers to also remove additional furniture that they don't need in their rooms to make the classrooms bigger. Academically, um, you know, the kids did the very best that they could. We worked really hard to keep them up with their studies. We started right out the door when we closed. We got moving right away. However, we know that it's been a long time since they've been in person in the classrooms and we want them back and we are so excited to have them back. But we know that there's some catch up we've got to do. So we are going to work very hard. We are very fortunate. We've got a full time reading specialist and a full time math specialist. We've got a speech and language pathologist. We've got our full time nurse. We have lots of, and a counselor. We have lots of extra support systems to help your students get up, caught up academically. We've got some assessments that we're going to be using. We've got teacher assessments and testing and multiple ways to determine where your children are academically. We're going to meet during our staff meetings and we're going to take that data and we're going to figure out ways to, to patch any holes that we have from this long extended break. We're here to work with you. We will also continue to have our learning labs. They will start the second week of school for grades four through eight. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays at no extra charge, have your child go to learning labs for any additional assistance that they need. And for the primary, we're going to begin learning labs right after Labor Day. As for cleaning, we will continue to have our cleaning staff enhance what they've been doing currently using the CDC COVID approved products to keep the, the school as clean as possible. Um, please do not forget, we are sending uh, most of our communication through the newsletter. If you have not signed up for the newsletter, you must go to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, OLMCschool.info and go to the parents tab and hit school newsletter. It comes out every Sunday at five o'clock. Nurse David will be giving you lots of information on a weekly basis to get us ready to return to school. We miss the kids. We really want them to come back. And so there are things that you can do this summer at home to get your children ready. I know father mentioned some things and nurse David has mentioned some things. So please follow some of these guidelines because we want to see you back in August. We really miss the kids. Thank you so much. We are looking forward to August 17th when we can welcome our students, teachers, and staff back to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. At the time that school closed in March, we recognized that being able to return to in-person learning would require some extraordinary and aggressive measures to create a healthy school environment, and we began diligently working on those plans with the help of a lot of people. Since March, there are some things that we know about the virus SARS-CoV-2 and the illness that, that it causes COVID. We know that COVID is not the flu. It more accurately, accurately would be described as a highly contagious viral pneumonia. This novel or new virus is one that no one has been exposed to before, and that means that no one has immunity to it. 
We know that COVID virus spreads most efficiently in very crowded, closed spaces where people who may be contagious may be. We know that COVID in mild cases may have few, if any, symptoms, but in severe cases, the pneumonia that it causes can be life-threatening, particularly for the elderly and people with underlying health conditions like heart disease, lung disease, or diabetes. And we know that medical providers, researchers, and public health experts are learning more about this illness every day. With all that remains unknown, it's understandable that there's fear, confusion, and anxiety about returning to school. We understand that. And it would be foolish of me to stand here and tell you that we've eliminated the risk completely from Our Lady of Mount Carmel. That environment doesn't exist. There's risk in the community, there's risk at the grocery store, there's risk wherever you go. What we've done at Mount Carmel is to go back to basics and tap into those things that we know over time have proven effective in reducing the spread of infection. Nurses have always been on the forefront of infection control and it's always fallen to nurses to provide environments where our patients could be taken care of safely and not become victims of infections that are in the environment. We've taken some of those same practices that I learned as a new nurse 36 years ago and that nurses before me throughout history have established, and we've brought them to the school environment so that we can try to mitigate the risk of anybody on the campus of Mount Carmel becoming sick. So one of the first things um, that's important is hand hygiene, and that begins with good hand washing with soap and water, hand sanitizer as um, a backup and kind of second line defense. When our students return to Mount Carmel, they will know that there are increased um, supplies and increased opportunities for them to wash their hands. There will be hand washing stations installed on the field be, uh, adjacent to our new bathrooms and uh, it will be built into the school day routine, increased accessibility um, and opportunities for students to wash their hands. But that's something that you can practice at home. Washing your hands for 20 seconds while saying the Our Father um, helps to ensure that your hands are clean. So it'll be increased focus on hand hygiene and making sure that we all are keeping germs off of our hands. And along with that, not touching our face um, and being careful about uh, touching high touch surfaces with hands that may have germs on them. So hand hygiene is the first and very important um, aspect of our, our infection control policy. The next part of it will be physical distancing and cohorting. I spoke about co cohorting in our newsletter a couple weeks ago. And cohorting actually is a practice that dates back to about 1847, recognized at that time that it was really effective um, in maintaining spread of infection between patients in hospital settings. And so cohorting really just talks about maintaining small groups, and we've chosen to do that with our homeroom system. And so when your children return to school, they'll be spending a lot of time with their cohort, which is their small group in their classroom, um, and we will be um, attempting to limit the amount of interaction that they have with other classes and with other um, students on the campus until we get to a point where we see a decreased um, infection rate in our community. So cohorting will be really important. And within their classroom, we're going to do our best to establish healthy environments. And so things like hand washing are going to be really important. Things like physical distancing, so that you'll notice there will be a difference in the way that the classroom is set up, where all of the children Desks will be placed in rows and columns. They'll all face in the same direction, and they'll be spaced out to give each child a little bit more physical space um, from his or her classmates. Also, part of creating a healthy classroom environment is the ventilation system. Father John 
has invested in having the um, ventilation system for the school thoroughly cleaned. The coils are be being treated with a special treatment that does not allow germs and microbes to stick to them and high um, efficiency filtration um, filters are being put in place. So we're doing everything that we can to create a healthy, healthy environment within the classroom. The third part of our infection control plan and one that's really critically important, it's probably the most vital role, the most vital part of this plan is that of illness, identification, and the separation of people who are ill. That means that we have to identify early those people who may have infection and keep that, those germs and that infection from coming onto campus. If we've created a healthy environment here, we need to make sure that coming from the outside, you're coming from a healthy environment so that we don't disturb what we're trying to create here. So the way that that's going to work is that you at home are going to be responsible for checking your children each day to make sure that they don't show signs of illness. Um, and as I've said before, and as everybody says here, it's always been about home and school at Mount Carmel. So we're gonna do a lot of things here in the school to help your, to, to create a healthy environment. But at home, we need you to be diligent about that as well. The only way we can maintain a healthy environment is if everybody's doing their part at home and monitoring where they're going and what germs they're getting exposed to and really being mindful about that. So illness surveillance is gonna start at home. We'll provide you with a tool, uh, with a checklist, um, kind of a screening tool that I hope you'll put on your refrigerator. Each day when your children get up, you'll check their temperature, you'll check and see how they're feeling, and if they have any of the symptoms that are listed on the screening tool, you will decide then whether or not they are fit to come to school or whether it's a day that they need to stay home. If you have a question about that, if you're just not sure, you can always call me in the office or at the beginning of school for our phase one, I'm going to be positioned in the parking lot under a first aid tent um, and you can always bring your child to me to be screened before they come to school. That way we'll hopefully catch people who maybe are in the early stages of any kind of respiratory illness, any kind of viral illness, and prevent those germs from coming onto campus. It's important to know that there are, uh, there is a procedure in place for if a child or a st staff member should become ill at school and have symptoms that are consistent with a respiratory infection, we have guidelines in place and we have parameters in place for taking care of that person and also for notification or contact tracing um, or, um, again, maintaining the health of our environment. And all of that would be coordinated through the Maricopa County Department of Public Health. Um, and they are currently revising their guidelines and but providing us at the school on the school side some really helpful tools and guidance in terms of how we would manage, for example, if we had a student that was diagnosed with COVID. And all of that would be um, communicated to you. But again, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to be establishing healthy practices in your home and healthy habits in your home that your child can then bring to school. And on our side, we're going to work to create a healthy environment here. And with healthy homes and a healthy school, we can help our children to be healthy throughout their um, year at Mount Carmel this year. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. I'm in the office most days during the week, um, or you can email me. And we look forward to um, a phenomenal school year. It's going to be a little rough at the start, but working together, home and school, we, we can do this. 
We share with you our school's opening plan, Smart, Healthy, and Holy, a home and school partnership. And we hope that through this partnership, our school will be a smart place, a healthy place, and is always a holy place for our students to learn and to grow. But again, your cooperation is critical in this endeavor so that together we can create the environment that we need to keep our children safe and to help them learn throughout this year and to grow in holiness with Christ. Once again, we're happy to answer whatever questions you have, uh, but please do pay attention to our school newsletter because Nurse David will be continuing to write the very specific details of our plan and why we've made the decisions we've made to open our school in this fashion as opposed to what other schools may be doing throughout the area. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, go to our school website, olmcschool.info, and you can sign up for the school newsletter. I realize you get lots of emails in your inbox, but this is one email you want to read each and every week until uh, the opening of school on August 17th. So uh, we're excited for August 17th to welcome all of you back and to once again have a great school year here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel School. God bless you and your families and have a great rest of the summer.